All right. So let's answer this question. Are we alone? So question is, is Calvin right? Is that maybe there's lots of intelligent life there? And they look at the Earth and they go, ah, why bother? So Enrico Fermi asked this question. Uh, Fermi was one of the key people in the making of the atomic bomb. And he made an estimate about how many intelligent civilizations there should be in the observable universe. So it's a very, very big number. And he goes, you know, after all these years, why hasn't anyone come and visited us? So the question is, where is everybody? Are we really by ourselves? Um, yet there is no evidence of a colonization effort by anybody. Well, and also including us. So maybe we're the first ones to reach this point where we're beginning to think about space travel. Uh, maybe other planets decided, yeah, we'll just send robots. Right? Robots are easier. Right? We sent ro we're sending robots to Mars. We've sent uh, probes all the way out past Pluto now. And so maybe we don't need to send humans. We just send bots. And they are kind of dumb bots. They don't quite know how to communicate yet. But one of the first things that we want to try to figure out is... Oops, Let's think about how likely is it that we're the first folks. So let's make an assumption that we have intelligence that arrives only once in every one million stars. All right. So our galaxy is about 12 billion years old. So we have to wait a few billion years for all the supernova to blow up, and so we can get the heavier elements, you know, da da da, all that type of stuff. All right. So then, if there's a 100 billion stars in our galaxy, which we think, and then going through all that math, there should be about 100,000 that should evolve civilizations. Okay? So there's 100,000 of them in our galaxy. Okay? So let's make an assumption if the first one arose about the same time it took us, then there's an intelligent civilization that should be somewhere in the galaxy every 60,000 years. So again, right, it took us about four and a half to five billion years to get from sun being formed to humans existing now. So you would think there would be some out there, given that we're 12 billion years old, right? So every 60,000 years, a new one should be popping up. So where is everybody? We can't, we haven't seen them, okay? We haven't heard from them. We haven't detected anything, even by accident. So let's think about colonization then. So, let's imagine that we could travel at 10% the speed of light, which is actually really, really fast. All right? And the average distance between the stars is about 5 light years. Yeah, that's about right. Alpha Centauri from us is about 4.5 light years away. And that's the nearest sun-like star to us. So, that's probably a reasonable estimate. So, traveling that speed, it would take us about 50 years to get there. So, that's actually within the lifetime of a single ship that could get there. And so then, let's say you get there, you land, you build another ship, and you head off to another another planet. Right? So after 150 years, that means that you'll spread off to a new one, because it'll probably take some time to get settled, you'll survive the new planet, all that type of stuff. And if you go through that, and you take into account how many planets we have in our galaxy, and how many we think are habitable, you would get an entire galaxy would be colonized in about 10 million years. Because basically what you would do is you would have one ship go to another planet. And at that planet could go to two planets. Those two planets would go to four planets. Those four planets would go to eight, 16 planets, right? So you begin to get this exponential exploration of the galaxy. So it's doable in 10 million years, right? We're four and a half to five billion years old. So... 10 million years in the grand scheme of how old the galaxy is, is not so bad, right? So if you begin to even think about that you want to do this as fast as you possibly can, right? So in year one, let's say that you launch a thousand ships, then, you know, some disaster has been going to impact the Earth, right? And then by the time that you get there in 
two million years, you're launching a lot of ships because of that exponential growth. So you could really rapidly um, colonize the galaxy if you had the resources and the will to do that. Okay. So then the question then becomes, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to colonize the galaxy? Well, one is right, eventually your star is going to die, so you're eventually going to want to be someplace else. But kind of right now, right, we have all resources that we need. So kind of unless there's a critical need on why you need to get off your planet, whether it's environmental collapse, whether you're running out of resources, you need to go get other resources, right? So why do you do that? Right. Yet we keep seeing that we go want to go explore and colonize, as history has shown us that it's not always a good thing. Um, but we kind of have this humane, human instinct to go explore. So there's lots of reasons to do it. Um, and then you periodically have your stupid civilizations because they can't colonize anything because they used up all their natural resources before they could actually get there. You know, maybe we're that one. Uh, maybe we're not. So here's the Fermi explanation on what's going on is maybe there is some event or something that actually prevents civilization from reaching a point where they can reach out and contact or even to colonize um, galaxy. Now let's look at our little happy species here. So we've got species A, species B, humans, and then we've got this rare species. All right. And so he termed this idea the great filter. So the great filter is some event that blocks a civilization from advancing and reaching out where we have starships. So maybe it's at the evolutionary leap period, you know, maybe life when it evolves in the oceans never really gets a foothold on land. So you're kind of stuck before you get there, right? Or maybe it's some technological understanding, right? That you can't get through, right? To be able to launch a ships. Maybe you don't have the right resources on your planet to be able to launch your ships, right? And this can happen anywhere. Right, so maybe is that as opposed to evolving intelligence, you evolve something else, right? Maybe dinosaurs stuck around. So there's some filtering event, and it can happen um, some point. The question is, for humans, are we on the other side of that filtering event, or are we approaching the filtering event? Right, if we're on the other side of the filtering event, then we might end up being an advanced civilization that goes to the stars. If we're on to the left of that great filter, that means some event is yet to happen that seems to be critical for, e for preventing species from evolving out and being the one species that successfully colonizes the galaxy. So it's clear that it, it is fairly rare or else we think we would be able to see people. So what is it that allows this little green Martian guy to get through this great filter? That we don't know. But there are some potential solutions. One of the depressing ones, yep, we're all by ourselves. There's nobody else out there. Or it could be that civilizations are fairly common out there. They just haven't colonized the galaxy. Right? And as we know, it's complicated, right? Getting to the moon took a monumental effort, right, to send humans there. Right? We've been planning a mission to Mars for quite some time. Right? It's dangerous. To travel, right? It's difficult. It's expensive. You need a lot of resources to do it. Right? Um, and maybe before they got to that point, a civilization blew themselves up, right? Maybe we didn't make it out of the 1960s, right? And we had a nuclear war and that prevented us, and that was our great filter. But maybe that was the filter that we were supposed to get through. So maybe we're going to be okay. Um, maybe there actually is a galactic civilization and they're just avoiding us, right? Um, Maybe they look at Earth and go, mm, I don't know. Or maybe it's a policy where they don't want to interfere with the development of a, of a species, you know, Star Trek's prime directive phenomenon. Right? So some other potential solutions is, yep, is that maybe they're, an advanced civilization goes, why bother? It's just the too cool for school motto. Yeah, we don't bother. Or maybe there's this, this big alien versus predator phenomenon out there. Maybe that there are predator civilizations out there that are old, very technologically advanced. And once they identify 
uh, advanced intelligence, that probably means that that planet has resources. Those resources are capitalized, right? So it's a different form of colonization, right? And then maybe there is a real predator species out there that, that has a foothold and they don't want anybody else to challenge them. So that once a civilization reaches a certain level, they squash it. These are all, last two are a little kind of depressing. The too cool for school one I kind of like. Um, but maybe we successfully end up destroying ourselves, right? We're busy in inventing artificial intelligence, automation, right? Maybe we really are living inside of a matrix, um, right? And oftentimes what happens with technology is it outraces our societal and, pol and policy understandings and decisions are made without really understanding what the political and social implications of them are. All right, so think about artificial intelligence, for example, right? It is rapidly racing ahead, and there aren't any real rules or policies in place, and we're just now beginning to grapple with them. So there's potential reasons on uh, why a civilization just might cease to exist before it reaches the point where it has a Starship Enterprise. 